Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And we're going to be, well, there's so much to go into today. First off, we're streaming. As this video hits, we are streaming. So just pause it, come to the live stream, join in. We'll have been doing it for an hour and then come back to this video. That's my tip. Um, engage with us as we try Islands of Insight. Um, and if you've come late to this video, you can catch the VOD anyway. Um, and watch a couple of hours of Simon battling motion sickness, perhaps, as we try and get to grips with what looks like an absolutely fascinating new puzzle game that's been highly recommended to us. Um, who knows what we'll be finding at the moment. That's going on on... Um, click the live button if you go to our channel page below here. And... Um, of course, this puzzle is by that I'm going to do is by Rocky Roa. Now, if you were to ask me, Rocky is definitely one of our favorite constructors. And I would have said that we do a puzzle of his every couple of months. So I looked it up. The last one we did was nine months ago. I'm sorry, Rocky. I don't know what's happened. But I'm delighted that we're going to have another go at one of your puzzles today. Um, Rocky Roa is a brilliant constructor. The puzzles are always great fun. Not always at the very hard end, but always good fun and I'm really looking forward to that. Now, um, that's coming up shortly. I've been spending quite a lot of time, as is our wont, occasionally going through submissions for future apps. We are planning another app and I can tell you it's going to be a real doozy. It's so interesting. Um, some of the puzzles we're getting are absolutely fabulous. I've been test I have the privilege to test a few and they look really really good so um do try our apps they are very good anyway they're on the links under the video along with sven sudokabad and our merchandise and patreon where you can still try wait still it's only just dropped five days four days ago you five days ago i don't know four four or five days ago you can still try um evening attractions our own sudoku hunt focusing on negative constraints and there are some some interesting and tricky and thought-provoking puzzles there. Do give them a try. Uh, so there's always loads going on around the channel, but we have this puzzle, Difference Fences by Rocky Rower. And here come the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. We'll be putting one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits in the circles must appear in the surrounding four cells. So these are quad circles, quadruples. And one and seven must appear in those cells. The white segments between certain cells represent difference fences. Each segment has a value equal to the difference between the cells they separate. On a fence, so we've got one fence. Let me just stick the pen tool on. We've obviously got one fence going round here. On a fence, no two segments can have the same value. So I think I've picked the most interesting fence to look at there. Each fence has a total value equal to the sum of all of the segments, and this total value is given in the attached quad. Some total values will need to be deduced. So I suppose that's given... So this, this quad that I'm outlining here is 1 and 9, which must be digits that appear in those four cells. But also, I think it acts as a two-digit number 19 for the, um, for the value of the three differences on this fence. Isn't that fascinating? What an Some total values will need to be deduced. I don't know if I said that. Well, that is a really complicated... Well, it's very new. It's very innovative. It's a bit complicated. I think, you know, I've grasped the rule already. It's not that bad, but it's surprising. And I don't know how this is going to play out at all. We've got various... I mean, Rocky does love his maths and numbers, so we've so far got different numbers on each fence, 12, 15, 17, 18, 19, and 21. My personal hope is that these two remaining numbers are also different. I don't know why. Anyway, let's get cracking. So, how on earth do you start this at all? Well, the one I picked was quite interesting. There are one, two, three, four, five, six different segments there on that fence. Now, the only possible values on the, on the fences are between one and eight. 
8 would be the maximum because it would surround fences 1 and 9. So the six values on this fence will include some quite high ones. No, maybe that's not going to get us very far. Let's look at the shortest fence with the highest number attached. 21 attaches to this three-cell fence. Right, well, I just said that the values that can be on the fence end at 8. So the values on this fence must be 8, 7, and 6 to make 21, because they all have to be different, and 8 is the highest. Now, to have three different values of 8, 7, and 6 on the fence, I believe we have to have a 1 in the middle, and then the digits 9, 8, and 7 spread around the fence. And we are fulfilling the quadruples 1 by putting it there. We're going to need to put a 2 in one of those cells, so as usual, a corner mark represents places within a box where a certain digit has to be, and a central mark represents the only candidates. Now that works very nicely. I could also put 7, 8, 9 in the corners of these cells, but I don't really need to because I know what's going on there. Now, this one next, I think this comes in a sequence because now we can't put 1 in the middle of this. Okay, I've just realized I might have been presumptuous. Why couldn't we put 9 in the middle of that and 1, 2, 3 there? And then the differences would be 8, 7, and 6. Okay, well, I'll tell you why you couldn't do that, and I'll show you because I've just worked it out. If you had 9 there and 1, 2, 3 here, two of the digits 1, 2, 3 would not be on this quadruple. Sorry, yeah, two of the digits 1, 2, 3 would not, and that would necessarily include at least one of 2 and 1. So that is not right. So I was right but not for the right reasons when I stuck a 1 in there and said that these are 9, 8, 7 and that there's a 2 here. So I can go back to that. Sorry if that deduction came a little prematurely. Now, I was going to say that this has to be a 2 with 9, 8, 7 here. But what do those differences add up to? 7 plus 6 plus 5, they only add up to 18. So that is definitely not right. In fact, this, is, this has to be a more extreme digit than a 2. So this is a 9. And these three, given that that has a value of 27 in these three differences, the three cells here, 27 minus 19 is 8. They add up to 8. So they're either 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. This one is not a 1, so one of these is a 1. But I can take that 9 back north and say that those two aren't 9, they're a 7, 8 pair, and 9 in the box is there. And now I'm doing this puzzle slightly more properly. Like, now I'm just going to use this 12, not as a 12, but as a 1 and a 2 on the quad. We've got a 1 there, so one of those two is a 1, and we now know where 1 is in this 8 sum in these orange cells that I'm marking. That's an 8 sum because of 27 minus 19. So we've got a difference of 8 there. If that's a 2, we would have a difference of 7, and that would be a 5. We'd have a difference of 4. 8, 7, and 4 add up to 19. Oh, and we've, we, I hadn't even thought about the 1 and the 9 on the quadruple here, but we've actually just written them in. Anyway, we've written a 1 in there. We now have to write a 2 into one of these cells, and it's going to be in one of these two. And that's not a 2, therefore, and that means this other orange isn't a 5. It's also not a 2 because of what's up there. So that's now become a 3-4 pair, definitely. I'm going to take out the colouring because the 3-4 pair is useful enough information for me. Now, possible digits in these cells are 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. How can I use those? Probably not much is, is my main answer. If I was to put a 2 in this cell, oh, this one can't be a 2 because of the 1, 2 quad. That one is 2, 5, or 6. It can't be the other of 3 or 4. So, I don't know. I don't think these are giving me two differences that contribute very usefully to this sum of 12 in the differences. I have a feeling 
we might end up with a two in the middle there, but it's only a hunch at the moment. Oh, talking of which, I do recommend my Wordle in a Minute series in the last three days. It's got very interesting. Anyway, um, 17 here. And again, we need a one on the quad. So there's a one there, and we need a one on this quad. So it's up there. However, 17 isn't quite even as big a number as 19, but this can't be an extreme digit now. It can't be one or nine because we've had them. In fact, we could even put a nine in one of those cells just by Sudoku. So this is, at its most extreme, it's two or eight. And what are the biggest differences? Imagine we put an eight in there and we can't have one in these things. So we could have two, three, and four. And our differences then would be six, five, and four, which is not enough. And that tells me that this is not an eight or anything like a seven. We just won't get the differences we need. Let me check that again. If we put an eight in here, which is one of the more extreme digits available now that nine and one are gone, we could put two, three, and four around here. The differences would be six, five, and four, and they only add up to 15, not the 17 required. So that is not eight. I think it's gonna to have to be from the other end of the differences too. The other end of the extreme digits is what I mean. And then these can be, so we need differences totaling 17. Let's multiply that two by three because it takes part in three sums or three deductions. Then these three have to add up to 23. The difference between or the sum of 6 and 17. So they have to be 9, 8 and 6. And we can put the 9 there and 6 and 8 here. And you can see the difference with 6 is 4. The difference with 8 is 6. And the difference with 9 is 7. 4, 6 and 7 do add up to 17. So the sum is successful. But we need a 7 placed around the 1, 7. So that's there. And that makes this an 8. That makes this a 7. The 2 that we placed, I've been waiting to do this fixes two in this box. And it's actually these little fences with the big numbers attached that are the exciting way to go in this puzzle, not the big fence, as I originally thought. 91682, so remaining digits are three, four, five, and seven in the row. Now it's time to turn our attention to the 15, which is a much smaller number, but we're getting less extreme digit availability here. Trouble is we can't do the math sum anymore of taking two, three times, because if we used five or four here, some of the digits on the other sides of the fence might be higher and some might be lower. And I think we get to add the absolute difference every time. Um, right, let's imagine this was a three. Then there would be very little point. I don't know, maybe 15 is just not a big enough total to play with. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna do some Sudoku and put three, four, five as a triple there got three, four, five, and six still to place in box one. Um, don't know. Sorry if you get a bit of extraneous noise. I've got some laughing builders outside the window, which is nice for general good humor, but not necessarily great for puzzling atmosphere. One of these is an eight. That's just by Sudoku in this row. Okay, I have to think about this. I've been fighting shy of it for a while. Let us imagine that was a three. Then two and one would be very small differences. So what are the biggest differences we could have? We could have nine, eight, and seven. And the differences would be six, five, and four, and would actually add to 15. So that might be what is going on. If this was seven, can these be one, two, and three? 
that would be 3, that would be 1, and that would be 2. And then the differences would be, again, 6, 5, and 4, adding up to 15. That's really interesting. So I suspect that 4 and 5 won't work, but I need to prove it. Yes, if we used 5, the only difference is you could get are a maximum of 4 in each case, which will never get you to a total of 15. If you used 4, the biggest differences you could have would be 9, 8, and either 7 or 1, which would give you difference total of only 12. So this is 3 or 7. And if it's 3, these are 9, 8, and 7. And I know the order. It goes 9, 7, 8. And if this is 7, then these are 1, 2, and 3, with 3 there, 1 there, and 2 there. So that's now a 3, 7 pair. Somehow I didn't see that coming. This is 4 or 5. Now, maybe, it's time to think about putting 5 and 1 here. 1 has to be in one of those cells. 5 has to be in one of those. 8. I don't know. 8 is somewhere here. But if that was a 1... I don't know. That's not doing anything. So we're getting something out of that. Let's just think about these possibilities again. Either this is 3 with 9, 8, 7 used up. Then that is a 5, 1 pair. And then you've got 2, 4, and 6 to place. Seems to be okay. And if that's a 7, we've got 2, 3, and 1. That's not so prescriptive on the 5 being here. Yeah, I don't think I can go further than that, but it's still quite a way that I have been able to go, and that's good. This 12 was a much smaller sum, wasn't it? That really wasn't as helpful, but still, this can't be a 5, because the three differences would all have to be 4, and you can only get two different differences of 4. I did mean to say different differences there. If this is 6, actually... The furthest away these numbers could be are 2, 3, and... You couldn't get 9, so let's say 2, 3, and 4. And the differences then would be 4, 3, and 2. That's nowhere near the required 12. So 6 is impossible. Let me try and rule out 4 as well. If that was 4, these could be 8 or 7 there. So let's say 8, and that's a difference of 4. But these could only be a maximum of two away. We're never going to get anywhere near 12. That certainly can't be four. I'm even wondering if it can be three now. With a three, you could put eight there. But in these two cells, the biggest differences you could achieve would be if you used six and five. And you'd have differences of five, three, and two. That doesn't add up to enough. So that is actually a two. I honestly had no idea that was going to come out as deducible on its own. But that has happened. And how are we going to get the difference needed here? 2 and 8 here would be the biggest difference across this fence. That's a score of 6. Then you can use a 6 and a 4 here. So there is one degree of freedom. Oh, no, there isn't, because you can't use a 6 and a 5 here, or that's broken. So that's what's going on. This is a 6-4 pair, and that's an 8. And that's how we're achieving our 12 here. We still need a 1 for the quadruple clue. Now that we've got that 4-6 pair, we can sort out 3 there, and 5 there, and 4 here. That looks up into box 1, and we get a 5 there. We go across the grid, we get 4 here. We need a 5 from the quadruple clue. That goes there. We need a 1 from the quadruple clue. We need an 8 in the box. And now it's starting to come together. This is brilliant. This is a 6 to complete the row. These ones are not 5 and 6. And in fact, we've finished box 1, thanks to that 4. Now, 
That was intriguing. This is a 3-5 pair. Lots more Sudoku to do. I feel more in my element when we're doing a bit less arithmetic and a bit more Sudoku. This is a 1-7-9 triple. One can't be at the bottom because of the quadruple clue. And there we go. We've fulfilled all the requirements, I think. Oh, no. Now that we know that's a 1, we know this is the high digit. That's a 7, that's a 3, that's a 2. Now we have fulfilled the requirements there. This digit's done. Okay, so we get to this position. Now, this quad circle needs a 1 in it, and I know where that goes. And the fence here is has a difference of 18, but we can't put a 1 on it. So the maximum difference in any bit of this is now 7. If you had a 2-9 pair, and you could only have one of those once in one of these cells. So after that, we're going to have differences of, well, I was going to say we're going to have differences of six and five, because you can only have one seven difference. Sorry, Simon, not happening at the moment. I know somebody, Lost Cabrio, always wants me to turn all my alerts of everything off. But unfortunately, I live a life and I need to know what's going on in it quite a lot of the time. And we're doing one of these videos every day. I can't just set aside time and have absolutely nothing else going on. So there you go, Lost Cabrio. Bad luck. Anyway, Lost Cabrio gets very annoyed by me getting alerts about other things. He wants my full attention. He's got it. Anyway... Where are we? We were going to say that one of these could have a difference of 7 on this 18 fence. And I was then going to say that the others are probably 6 and 5 to make up the 18 sum, because only one of them can have a difference of 7. But I have to bear in mind the possibility that all three have a difference of 6. Now, how would that pan out? If we don't have a 1, well, yeah, it, it is possible, because you could have 6... You could have a 2 and 8 once, but then you could have a 3 and a 9 both ways round. Although it turns out you can't. Because you can't have a 3 and 9 either in that row or in that row. And you can only have a 2 8 once in any of these three places. So you, and since you can't use 1 7, because of the two ones have gone in these columns. That is a complicated fence, but it's going to need a difference of seven, which is a two nine difference, which is either in row six or row seven. So one of those is a two, one of those is a nine. I don't love marking across boxes, but it seems to be justified here. Then we're going to have a difference of six, which is not a one eight, a not a one seven or a two, eight. It must be a three, nine. And the nine is now not in column eight. It's in column nine in one of those cells. It must be down here, in fact. So we can put the three next to it. So we get nine there, three there, nine there, two there. Now we have a difference of five here, not using one or nine. This is either two, seven, but we've used two in the box, or three, eight. So it's eight, three like that. And now our difference is fulfilled. 5 plus 7 plus 6 equals 18. And we've actually placed the 1 and 8 for this quadruple already. And that's just intriguing that that's fallen out like that. Now, we still have the unknown fence numbers to go. But we've done a lot of the puzzle. So, so they, might not, they might be manageable. 7 and 8. I've finished the final column. Uh, thanks to that 8 looking across the grid there. That's not a five. Four, five, six, seven to go. That's, this is fascinating. I mean, we're almost going to find the fence total to know what goes in the quadruple cell. Oh, that three has sorted out the five, three pair. And above it, the two in row six. Oh, I've got three in the corner. That's three in the corner. No time for a song three, sorry. Um, this is just weird and wonderful. Four, five, six, seven. So this difference can't be any more than three. 
This difference, that's not a seven now by Sudoku. One of those is a seven. I don't know, this is gonna get quite fiddly suddenly, isn't it? Got one and two down here. And then we just have to find what the numbers are. It didn't say that they had to be a double digit pair. That can't be a seven and that can't be a nine, but they're not resolved. Nine is in one of those cells. Two is somewhere. Oh, maybe this, it's, we're going to go back to this one with all these differences, none of which can be absolutely massive anymore. Well, I wonder if that is true. It probably isn't true. All of these six differences around this fence have to be different. Are any differences entirely ruled out? I think only one nine might be entirely ruled out. And that can actually happen with a one there. Ah, oh, no, that's that pencil marking is going to rule out one nine out of all of those places. It's already ruled out of there and there by this nine. It's ruled out of there and there by these nines. So one nine does not occur on this fence. So the values on the fence are six of the values from seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, is seven possible? It would be great if it wasn't. We can't have nine, two there or one, eight, because that digit can't be either of them. I'm sure we could have, oh, we can't have nine, two here because of that pair, but we could have one, eight. No, we couldn't because eight's been ruled out. So this couldn't be 92 or 18 in any of those either. This couldn't be 92, but it could be 18, and I think that one could as well. So that deductive power is not working. I don't know how we're going to get this done. I want to get more of this done by Sudoku and then try and understand more about this fence first. It's all very well using the adage about cross each fence as you come to it, but you do come to these fences in a bunch, to be honest. Wow, is there anything else I should have finished off from before? I don't think so. I think these fences, once, they, once the digits get resolved, they are just done as what they are. Wow, I don't know. This is going to be very difficult to finish, I imagine. Okay, let's think about this one. So this difference is one, two, or three. This one is five, four, or three. I'm just gonna aid memoir these. That one is one, two, or three. This one is three, four, or five. This difference, what's this digit? One, two, four, six, or seven. So its difference with three is two, one, three, or four. Well, that's not a huge number of possibilities. Now, on a fence, they all have to be different. Three, five, four is the maximum. That would be 12. But that would require a one, two pair here. which is impossible if this was going to have a difference of four, because that would be a seven. Well, that's quite interesting. If we could rule out 11 and 10 as well. I don't quite know how a difference of 11 would be represented. That would need two ones. That's what a quad circle means. You can't have two ones around here, so 11 is impossible. 10 is impossible because it would involve a zero. Okay, 
So this different circle is going to contain a single digit that is not 9, 8 or 7. So the value is 6 in this circle. And these differences are going to be a 1, a 3 and a 2. Or well, the middle one is going to be the 3 according to my Ed memoir. So that's a 6. This difference is then going to be a 1 either way round. And this difference is going to be a 2. So that has to be a digit that is a 1. And there we go. That difference has been fulfilled. Or not almost, because the difference is now 6. So 6 has to be in one of those two cells. So it's not there. Now that 1 fixed a triple we had over on the left. 7, 9, 1. And we're going to get a 1 somewhere down here. We're going to get a 9 in one of those two cells. 1, 3, 9, 7, 8, 2 is placed in box 9 there. And that is from 4, 5, or 6. It's not 6, actually. 6 is placed in the box as well there. Because we got this as a 6. That's not a 6. This is, in fact, a 4 now. That's just Sudoku. 4, 7, 5. That difference became 1, as we were expecting. We finished the final three columns. Very surprisingly. Right. So it's this fence, this long fence is the one we come to last in this puzzle. Not at all what I was predicting in my innocence and simplicity. Now, I am definitely mark it, pencil marking everything I can, because I love doing that. Not really true, but it does sometimes help me. One, four, five there. Okay, that one can't be a five. Now, we've got to think about this difference to sort out these last... Let's just get rid of some candidates. Oh, five, two and nine in this column. Five in this column. We really don't have a lot of other information, do we? But these differences around these fences have to all be different now. So, assuming one, two, three, four and five probably do appear, Something has to have a difference of at least six. Where are we? Well, that could be eight, two here or seven, one here. OK, first of all, can anything have a difference of more than six now? That can't. That can't. This six is the maximum. Here, I think six is the maximum because three is the minimum digit. And here, six isn't even possible. So... These fences are going to be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 as differences, adding up to 21. And those 2 and 1 have to be in these cells. So that makes that a 4, and this not a 2. It places 2 there, and 1 in one of those. So we, we've fulfilled the quadruple that says 21. Now, we still have to achieve the fences, but we've got a tiny bit more Sudoku information to go on. That's not a 2. The 4 there takes 4 out of those cells. It makes this a 3 and that a 4. That places 4 here. The 3 takes 3 out of that cell and it makes this a 9. And that 9 places 9 here. Come on, Sudoku, do all the work so I don't have to. 7 and 6, it does seem to be doing the work which is great. That's now a six. Oh, hang on. Something's gone wrong in this row. That is not a six. This, this was a six. That was all right. But this was not a complete triple. In fact, that four, was that correct when I put the four in there? Because I was doing it based on there being a triple. No, that wasn't correct. It could be a four down in the bottom row. So I've got to go more slowly from this point. My apologies there. That is not a 4 and that's not a 4. That's all I got. But I can place 2 here. 3, that has made that into a 9. This is not a 9. That's not a 3. But it is an 8 now. So 8, oh sorry, I'm hitting the wrong button. 8, 3, 9 works there. 3 now is there and 5 there. I think this is still right. 1, 5. This can't be a 1 anymore, which is reasonable. 
I still haven't actually sorted out that 4-6 pair, but I've got an 8 looking up here, so 6-8 are done. That does 7-6 here. That takes 6 out of those cells. This has become a 1 by elimination. Now I've got a 4 8 6 7 set, which doesn't resolve, uh, but that 7 1 is done. So I get 4 there, 6, and I'm going to hopefully prove this last fence here. And if not, I have to go back further. Oh, it says it's, it says it's correct. So let me just like it, and then I can check these totals. We've got a difference of 1, a difference of 2, a difference of 3, a difference of four, a difference of five, and a difference of six, all adding up to 21. Isn't that a fabulous puzzle of difference fences by Rocky Rower? Lovely stuff. Just You just bow in tribute to the guy's brilliance. That is so clever and such good fun as well. I do like Sudokus that are fun. Give it some love in the comments, please. It's a very clever puzzle, and I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again soon. I'll give Simon a ring now. Bye for now.